Hey everyone, welcome to AGT time. It's the Champions 2 finals episode. It's the finals Patterson episode. Here along with uh, along with Jay Bach. And uh, believe it or not, you're going to get a bonus week out of us. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of bummed about this a little bit. I'm excited and bummed a little bit about this, Jay. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, okay, so we got all the finals performances and no results. Right. Uh, and I don't know how long the episode is going to be on Monday, if it's one hour or two hours, but it's going to be an exhibition. I'm sure we're going to get to see some old friends back. We're going to see some, uh, you know, popular you know name brand acts that uh want to push something or you know let us know some project that they're working on or whatever the the is going on it's going to be highlighted for us um not all bad you know we're going to get to see like i said some old agt friends and and uh get the results in the most excruciating way possible i'm sure so (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah so it's gonna be like five minutes of results and according to my youtube tv it's from 8 to 10 01 p.m eastern time 8 to 10 so it's a two-hour episode for what could have been done in the last 30 seconds of the of the show <laughs> yes okay. yes they could have made this a two and a half hour show uh, true true and you know who would have two and a half hour show and give us you know 30 minutes right. results or whatever we would have tuned in for it regardless so yeah absolutely uh, it's, uh, there we go all right well this was uh all the acts uh and we talked about you know are we gonna try and draft them or we're we gonna try and you know pick favorites or you know somehow um make a game out of this and i think at the end of the day uh it's just not gonna work in a in a way that we felt was fair or in a way that was gonna make a lot of sense but um you know, play along. Who do you think should win? Who do you want to win? Uh, you can always reach out to us uh, on Twitter. It's at AGT time on Facebook. It's AGT cast or shoot us an email. AGT cast at gmail.com. And with that, Cody, are you ready to jump into some uh, some finals acts? I, I am ready, but I just got to say one quick thing, Jay. We got a comment from Hans. That's right. We did get a tweet from Hans. Uh, and you had tweeted something out, like tweeted out the last episode on the AGT Time account, right? I did. So I tweeted out the episode. It had the word Hans in it. And I'm guessing his PR firm or whatever has Hans tagged in Twitter. And when something comes up, he probably gets some sort of notification. And uh, he tweeted us back. But I'm not going to repeat it because it's not. Uh, we our, our podcast is rated as clean, so um, it's not something I can really repeat on uh, on the air. But um, you know, it, it's out There's there. There's a certain B word that he likes to use. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, and it's not uh, it's not ba- babe or Breakfast. baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay. um, but we'd love to hear from uh, our our listeners because if Hans can tweet us, you guys can tweet us too. Yes, absolutely. And we could probably do a better job of, you know, tweeting at the other um, uh, the other acts and, you know, making it known when we uh, are talking about them and, you know, possibly uh, building our following that way. You know, people see the people that we're talking about, you know, with that tagged on them. But, uh, you know, I... I think that we're we're doing a nice little job here as a nice little podcast, and uh, it is fun to actually have a bit of interaction with uh, with the acts out there. Yeah, absolutely. It keeps it exciting each week when we only get uh, when we get uh, comments back from the performers. So we 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 appreciate it if uh, some more of them did it. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah. So you know, reach out to us, guys. Uh, we'd love to interact with you if you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have input. What can we do better? Uh, what uh, what do we do well? You know, give us the you know the what is it? Rate, review, and subscribe. So that's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> with with that, Cody, are you ready to jump into the acts here? I am ready. Let's do it. Go for it. Okay. All right. The first act of the night was Alexa Lauenberger, right? Right. And uh, she is the uh, young lady who trains the dogs. Um, everyone is, uh, judged against their talent. It's hard to win, but, uh, so she does it where these 
dogs, they, they put their front paws up on the bench. They kind of shimmy down along the side. Uh, the dogs are jumping off the bench into her arms. She has one of the big dogs hold a jump rope while other dogs jump over it. They didn't spin the jump rope. There was none of that going on. But the, the one of the dogs did hold it while the dogs, you know, sort of just jumped over it like a stationary thing to jump over. Uh, dog was doing backflips. Uh, they had all the dogs jumping over some hurdles. And then they did their Congo line again. You know, pretty standard Alexa Lauenberger stuff. What would you think of Alexa tonight? I, I thought this was fun. I en- I enjoyed watching it. I was waiting for them to, you know, spin the jump, spin the rope and have the dogs jump over it, double dutch style. Um, I thought that would have been a lot of fun to see, but they, they never did it. And the the dog itself was looking like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do this. What, what, what are we going to do next? Because um, it was just kind of sitting there. Uh, but all, all the dogs were kind of cute. I loved the little podiums that they had. Uh, each podium had the dog's name on it. Uh, maybe that's to yeah. help. Yeah. Maybe that's to help Alexa know which dog is which. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I but, doubt uh, that. I, I yeah. feel like she's got a pretty good relationship with all of them, really. I, I, w- I would say so. Um, but so that was a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I didn't feel this was a finals performance. It was fun to watch, but I didn't feel that it was a finals performance. Yeah, and the judges kind of alluded to that themselves. Alicia said, it's so much pressure. You did a new routine with new tricks. How he said, uh, the real story is the one act that's going all the way. You nailed it. Simon said, this is not going to make me very popular. Booze from the crowd. And then he said, this was nowhere as good as your previous two performances. Heidi said, uh, to do a new routine in just one week is so hard but kudos to you for doing it so they're recognizing like hey maybe this isn't up to snuff for you alexa um but what it is what it is you know uh we gave you a week to prepare and you turned around and you gave us another act and in real time you know when were the semifinals recorded and the finals recorded it was pretty close to each other right i i would think so i don't have the the production schedule up in front of me but they they talked about a week so i would surprise i would be surprised if uh between semifinals and finals they gave them some extra time um to kind of put something together yeah yeah i I don't think it was much time for them to to put much together but uh you know she did a fine job i i didn't feel like this was championship quality like you um but uh, it, it's still a fun act. I enjoy watching her. She's fantastic with these dogs. The uh, stuff that she gets them to do, you know, most of it I've seen before. But uh, she's also, you know, doing it as a as an eleven year old, and she's cute, and the dogs are cute, and I see why people love it. Uh, I, I agreed. And um, uh, what was I going to say? I had something. Hold on. Oh, she was. Uh, she performed to the song "Starships" by Mick, Nicki Minaj, and she had kind of a little starship astronaut outfit uh, that she was wearing. So uh, uh, the theme, the theme was pretty good. I wasn't familiar with the song, but um, it was it was still fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. I didn't make a note of the theme or of the uh, the costuming, I guess, on this one, but. Um... Yeah, fun to watch, a fine way to start the night, but I'm not expecting them to uh I'm I'm not expecting her in the top half, I guess, after that performance. Okay, so you you think she's a bottom half uh you think she's in the bottom half. Yeah, yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, I I would probably agree with that. Yep. All right. Uh Duo Transcend was the second act of the night. This is the um a high flying aerial act you'll remember uh the, they're the ones that isn't duo destiny um <laughs> <laughs> uh in their I, the, video the, package I, they tell us in, in in my opinion the better of the two duos i i, I think so we could yeah. go with that but yeah um in their video package they tell us they're going to perform something they've never done before so, you know, keep your eyes open for that, I guess. It feels like that's what they have to say before every performance, right? Uh, agreed, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so they started up on the trapeze uh, together, and we see them slip the blindfolds on, and they do the entire act blindfolded. And it was uh, pretty impressive stuff. She kind of started up um, 
uh, like climbing up on him and over and a down and, you know, the spinning and flipping that they do up on the trapeze like they always do. Uh, she stands up on his shoulders and we see her jump off his shoulders or like fall off his shoulders towards his outstretched feet. And they split to commercial break. And then we got to see her again stand up on his shoulders and like jump off or fall off his shoulders towards his outstretched feet. And would you believe it? He caught her with his feet. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> that that was an act we'd never seen before. But th- he actually did catch her, you know, so that commercial break was uh, unnecessary suspense. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it made my shins ha- hurt watching it. But we have seen them fall. So we know that that, that possibility is there. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. Uh, yeah, and he's ridiculously strong, right? Like he was absolutely, uh, you know, sitting up on that trapeze bar, and she uh, lands on his ankles, like in her armpits, and you know he uses his the the power of his shins to hold her up, <laughs> and uh, you know then you know more spinning and flipping. He holds her by one foot, like around at her ankle. Uh, the final move, she was kind of hanging upside down, and she held him uh, around his torso, uh, and then she dropped him to the ground, and she came behind. So, um, you know, beautiful, sexy, uh, you know, all the words that the judges have used to describe this act in the past, they they did it all again. What do you think of Duo Transcend for this act? Uh, uh, this this is one of my favorite um, acts in, uh, in uh, Champions 2. Um, I think they're they're fantastic. Uh, they're they do some stuff that we don't see from other types of performances. I love they did the whole thing blindfolded. Um, you could tell that they were they were really feeling each other out, trying to figure out where things are. Um, and and at one point, and I've mentioned this, I think one of the other acts has done this before that where she supports him. She holds him, and I think at the very end she drops him as the the, the finale, um, which I always like when when the woman can then be the superior one in the act. Um, you know that shows that you know, she's she, you know they're not just a one trick thing where he's doing all the strength stuff. She can do the strength stuff too. Yep. Yes, so she's doing the strength stuff stuff too, um, which which makes it even better. That means that it opens it up to a whole new a whole new box of tricks that they can do. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, they they absolutely look like they love and trust each other, and and you have to in this type of performance. Um, and and it looks like it's it's a hundred percent, hundred fifty percent genuine um, that they that they love each other and that they completely trust each other. Yep, yep, I I agree. Uh, Alicia said it was like 50 shades of dancing up there. Such a sexy act. So much respect for what you've just done. Heidi said, you guys are so captivating. It was all feel and touch. And we know you really upped your game. I truly believe, or Howie said, I truly believe the performance we just watched was worthy of the finals. Simon said, I think this was the best performance we've ever seen from these two. It was so difficult, so dangerous. Um, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm on the same page. They were captivating i think was a really good word for heidi to use like i didn't want to look away and i wanted to see what was going to happen and how they were going to do it and uh the the way that they were going to do it and the blindfolded the fact that it was all just you know them trusting each other and knowing what was coming next and and the it it was a, a just very professional very clean but dangerous looking routine all the way around. I, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I loved it too. Where, where so, would you put, yeah. where would you put them? Uh, you know, rough, uh, fourth top half, okay. middle half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's a top half. I think that's fair. Yep. Uh, okay. Third act of the night. You ready to talk about this one? Uh, y- yes. We can talk about Angelina Jordan. Angelita Jordan. This was Heidi's golden buzzer, uh, our young little jazz singer. She was uh, just seven when she won her season, but uh, a you know young adolescent now, singing the song "Goodbye Yellow Brick Road." Um, but again, like like we've never heard it before, right? Totally jazzy, a totally different 
uh, rendition, totally different uh, style than than I've ever seen before. Anyhow, um, last time she sang, you said you heard some like Nora Jones vibes. Yes, uh, and and I was listening for that, and I was like, oh yeah, okay, definitely hear some Nora Jones there. Still, uh, you know, has that kind of throaty Billy Holiday sound to her. Uh, so smooth and jazzy and you know the accompaniment was just piano and super basic nothing distracting uh she was shoeless again i noticed that like she was last time no shoes on Uh, okay i didn't notice that it's good good catch you know if i were going to give any sort of uh critique i'd say there was a moment where i felt like she kind of did the the over the, the throaty vocals thing that she does uh but you know I, I thought it was just a wonderful reimagining of the song and really really easy to listen to you know i i just wanted to sit there and close my eyes and just kind of bask in it it was it was beautiful yeah i i love that her rendition of these songs that she's doing is very unique um she's doing like we mentioned like you mentioned a, a like a jazzy version like an old school jazz version of these popular songs uh you know they they talked about this song being 40 50 years old um it, it came out in 73 uh, Elton John originally sang it uh I, I really really like this rendition but I'm not too big I I don't know if it was big enough for the finals I think she did a, a, a great job but some of these other acts that we saw I I, I thought were much more exciting, uh, much more dangerous, much more intense. Uh, and, and I think she's our only singer. Is that right? I, I think she's uh, the only singer. The only straight singer. There's Marcelito Pomoy. Okay. So, yeah, the only uh, straight, straight singer. And Hans, of course. And, well, yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So, yes. But just standing up there and, and singing, uh, just uh, I I – I don't know if it was enough. Um, I, it was, it was, again, it was kind of like um, um, Alexa. It was fun to watch. It's a very unique uh, skill that she's got, but I'm not sure if it's enough with the other types of talent that we have in this. Yeah. You know, the thing that I can say, like on her behalf, like I can imagine a world where I uh, seek out her music or where I put on her album and have that on in the background while I'm cleaning the house or whatever. Like it, it is so pure and simple and just uh, easy, easy to listen to. That's the word I keep going back to is easy. Um, you know, like this is something that I could see myself having searching out outside of America's got talent. Whereas other acts, I don't know that I would go out of my way to have that, have that around me. Um, so, you know, for what it's worth, it's, it's, it's fun to listen to. And I, I could see myself having, you know, actually putting a, a dollars behind <laughs> dollars behind it, right. Making an investment in it. Uh, so for what it's worth, uh, yeah, Heidi I, said, you make your, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, yeah, I, I can see that. And kind of the same thing of you say you could put it on, it would just kind of be on in the background. And I, I agree. It's something that would be on in the background. Whereas some of these other acts, if they came on the television, you know, it's, it's like, Oh, Hey, uh, duo transcends is going to be on tonight. Ooh, I want to tune in for that. But if it was like, Hey, um, uh, Angelina Jordan's going to be on TV. I'd be like, okay um that might be nice to watch but i wouldn't be excited about it i i would kind of be like you are where it's it's on in the background i'm not sure i would you know put dollars into it um but if it was kind of on the radio or if it came on you know a a mix on spotify or on sirius xm or something like that Mm -hmm. you know i would i wouldn't turn it off it'd be nice to listen to i i don't know if i would go out and buy her album all right okay that's fair um yeah i I loved it uh heidi she said you make your golden buzzer mama proud the melancholy you put into that song was incredible how he said at any age but especially at 13 the word that comes to mind is hypnotic <laughs> yeah i uh, i thought you'd kind of point that out for her uh, age well, you know she's <laughs> for your age she's she's actually just good it doesn't 
matter. Uh, Alicia said, you're an old soul trapped in a young person's body. I think you're incredible. Uh, Simon said, one, you took a risk. Two, I'm going to remember this for a long, long time. I think you're a special person and a special talent. So I I don't know what the risk was in right. you yeah. know, selecting that song, but um, uh, yeah. And, and, and I don't know the original song. I haven't sought out and actually listened to the original song to to say it was a risky song. Um, I don't know what it sounded like originally. Uh, and, and maybe I should have done that before coming on and kind of, you know, fully critiquing this. Uh, that's probably not completely fair, but um, I, 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 I agree. I don't know what the, I agree. I don't know what the risk is in this song. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, think it, I, th- I think if she were on with other singers, I think she could really hold her own with other singers. I'm not sure she can hold her own with this, with these other acts. Yeah, 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 and I guess that's the thing about singers is it's sort of their one thing that they do. They are, you know, it's it's pretty accessible for the audience to see a singer and, you know, put a name to a face and, you know, sort of recognize the singer and, and feel sort of connected to them because it's a, an emotional sort of thing. So I can see why singers always do well. The fact that she's the only singer, it might bode really well for her. The only straight singer, I should say. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I feel like I want to put her above uh, Duo Transcend, uh, so at least number three, uh, okay. which doesn't leave a whole lot of room at the top with so many acts left here. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I, I would I would probably put her at four. Okay. Yeah, you I'd, had her I'd, below Duo Transcend then? No, no, no. I would, I, yeah, I would have her one spot below Duo Transcend. Okay. So maybe, at, right. maybe at five. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well, one of the acts that I don't have necessarily in my top two that I'm needing to, you know, push her any further <laughs> down the list here, is the fourth act of the night. This is Simon's Golden Buzzer. You'll remember them as Boogie Storm. Yes. Uh, dun dun dun. dun. Yes. Sorry, um, sorry, I was trying to do they, the Imperial March, and I completely flopped there. They they did um, a dance act, and uh, they weren't very in sync, and <laughs> they did a couple of like flips, and you know we've seen better backflips and flips and that sort of stuff. We're um, gonna see better better flips here in a little bit. Yeah, uh, I yeah. I don't have anything good to say about them. No, <laughs> they they uh, did. Um, I counted five songs um and i stopped counting after three once howie did his buzzer i well i i stopped keeping track of the songs uh right, but i counted yeah. i counted up to five different songs that they did and just a montage of like all the classic uh or you know modern classic uh things that you have to hear at a wedding right you had yeah, old town yeah. road and what else was cotton eye joe in there and uh, <laughs> yeah the uh, pony and gonna make me lose my mind and me hinte and so yes just a lot of dance uh like you say wedding <sighs> prom night dance moves. yes and you know what like if this group busted into a wedding reception and they put on that dance mix and they did their thing and then they marched back out you know what i would be on my feet smiling laughing that's wonderful fun this is not a champion. Like, you're perfectly set in a, you know, stupid amateur wedding reception, but this is nothing. Like, I I, I don't need them on my screen. They're taking up space. Yeah, no, if uh, if they, if they if Disney World embraced this and actually had the real Stormtroopers do something like this in the middle of Hollywood Studios, that's, that's their crowd. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, it was fine. Howie said, I'll be honest, I don't get it. The dancing's not fantastic. There's no message. Alicia said, I was pleasantly surprised. You're not the best dancers, but you got us on our feet. Uh, Heidi said, what a turnaround. I see a whole different group on the stage. Simon said, the message is, that was hope. <laughs> this is a was group it? of people who are not known for being nice people, but they've come and the dark side has become the light side. So Simon was even reaching for nice things to say. That's what I heard. Yeah. So is is it a new hope? 
A New Hope. That, that's um, that's what they originally. That's yeah. what they called the original Star Wars. A New Hope. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you got to explain the joke, it must not yes. be funny. Uh, but, no, I, but, I, but I'm. I, I'm 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 on board with Howie. Uh, I I didn't get it. I don't know why Simon loves this so much. I don't either. He's really into him though. Um, what do you say? It's it's them being them. It's what they yeah. do. They they're fun, you know. Uh, and man, like we could go back to what I call t- tapping dad syndrome, right? Where the the tapping dads was a group that was on clear back at like season four and they were these dads that got together once a week and they would learn to tap dance in this guy's garage and then they ended up you know making it at least a few rounds into america's got talent but by the time they got to the later rounds like the charm of their amateurism had worn off uh and they were being compared against these professionals and you know like boogie storm as amateurs that's pretty fun Boogie Storm as professionals, not, no, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. No, I so. completely agree. I completely agree. Uh, we did right. miss one thing at the beginning where Simon's son came out as a Jedi hologram. Oh, yes. Uh, I guess I didn't catch that that was Simon's son. I was kind of tuned out. I, I'm guessing it was Simon's son. And Simon got real excited when he was up on the screen, so I can only okay. assume that All it was right. his son. So. Good enough. Okay. Uh, fifth act of the night. You ready? Yes. Silhouettes. I'm moving on. Silhouettes. This was Alicia's golden buzzer. So three of the golden buzzer acts in a row here. Um, and so the silhouettes, they're the shadow dance group, the original shadow dance group. Um, boy, what was that story? Can you tell me what I saw? Yes. So the story was a family was evicted from their house. And they were homeless. And okay, I got they, that much. They went to a, a soup kitchen. And I didn't catch this until the second my second watching. But it looks like, okay. like a police officer came along and sent them to some sort of soup kitchen. And okay. then something happened where I think either the dad got a job or somebody helped them out. And they got their house back. But I'm missing yeah, that so part. That... I'm miss. I'm missing that part there, uh, where they all of a sudden were able to get their house back, and I I don't understand why. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, there was something that was a little bit lost in their storytelling, and that's that's what I was trying to figure out myself. Uh, I knew that they were evicted. I knew that they were homeless. I knew that the police came. And then the story kind of fell apart, and then bada boom, bada bing, they're back in their house. So, <laughs> um, I noticed like there was like person talking on the phone to another person, talking on the phone to another person. Like there was sort of this game of telephone going on, but it just was not clear how they were trying to um, get them back in their house. Based on that. Um, at the very end, they used their bodies to spell out the word kindness. I thought that was kind of cool as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I felt like the story was a little bit thin there. Um, but I can also say that the shapes that they made and their um, use of props and that sort of stuff was all really cool. One thing that I liked when they were, uh, it might have been in the soup kitchen, uh, there was a person that was like squatting to make the the shape of a house out of the inside of their legs was sort of the the structure uh, I thought that was kind of cool uh, the way that they they made that out of out of a person you know a, a giant leg shape that they were all huddled under or or doing their their act under um, but nothing in here really stood out to me like, wow, that was so inventive, so creative, so different. So, um, uh, always a, always a fun act to watch, you know, the, the storytelling being a little bit thin, nothing that I've never seen before. makes me a little bit concerned that they're not going to do real well come results show next week. But, uh, yeah, I guess that was silhouettes. Yeah. I, I was a little disappointed in them this week. Uh, you know, they're, they're OG silhouettes. They're the ones that started this whole shadow dancing thing that we see on TV. They may not be the first. Mm-hmm. We, we don't know if they're the actual first that invented the whole thing, but they're the first ones we've seen it on. We, 
the first ones that we've seen do it on TV. Um, and, and I love them. They're, my, they're one of my favorites. Uh, but I felt, I felt disappointed. I didn't get the feels this time. And, uh, you know, from silhouettes, that's kind of what we've come to expect is, uh, the feels, um, the awe and the right. amazement. And I didn't get that. The only thing that really caught my attention was, um, when the people would kind of form tables, um, I thought that was something yeah. new. Um, I mean, it wasn't fantastic, but I thought it was new where they were tables. Um, and But it, it didn't really, it, there, there was nothing that really stuck out to me uh, of that, that amazed me. And I didn't feel that it, that it, it hit me like the one uh, in, the, in the previous round. Yeah, yeah. And that mirrors Simon's comment. He said, I love the message and I love you, but I don't think that was as good as your previous performance. Uh, Heidi said, I love you guys. It takes a lot for me to well up, but it jumped off the stage. Uh, how he said, nobody does this clearer or better using this platform to change the world is deserving. And Alicia said the story was clear and understandable. Homelessness is such an issue around the world. So, um, uh, and I read those in reverse order, but, um, you know, <laughs> Simon, <laughs> uh, like, like he said, it wasn't as good as your previous performance. I don't think this was their best. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's that's going to make them win unless people are maybe thinking about their entire body of work up to this point. But uh, it's a, it's a going to be an uphill climb for them. Yeah, and, and I don't I don't think that anyone in that audience or any of the super fans are going to be thinking of their full body of work because I don't think any of them have seen their full body of work. Uh, you know, the way that this is recorded, this is probably a whole new audience that did not see the previous two performances. Um, so unless they're well, thinking back, we got to, the super fans though, right? That's the super, yeah, super fans. And obviously, the super fans know everything about what's going on. But uh, from what I understand, it's more the audience members who are the super fans, and uh, they're the ones voting. And I, I don't think that they've seen their previous two performances. So unless they're thinking back to when they were on AGT the first time, um, I, I, I'm not very confident that Silhouettes is going to finish in the top half. All right. Uh, all right. You ready for the second half of the show? Yes. We'll, we'll turn the corner and uh, friend of the podcast, Hans, is the sixth <laughs> act of the night. <laughs> Can we say that? He's back. He's back. <laughs> He's back. He says in his video package, you're going to see the real me, conservative, subtle, dignified. I don't believe it for a second, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he... Uh, I don't know. The the judges were commenting that the set looked toned down for this performance. Uh, he comes out of a big like limo taxi, uh, sings Donka Shane for a moment, and then he Again. says, "You didn't think I was gonna do that, right?" Uh, ripped off his jumpsuit, his sparkly, or ripped off his suit to reveal a sparkly green jumpsuit. Um, Gets an X from Simon, sings Let's Get Loud. Uh, is that a J-Lo song? Yeah, yeah, Jennifer Lopez. Even, uh, I think even someone yep. asked him that. Who sings that? He says, that's Jennifer Lopez, baby. Right, because the sparkly green jumpsuit reflected her famous green suit that plunged to her belly button. So Yes, he, um, was, wearing a, he was wearing a J-Fo. <laughs> jfo right uh he did some tap dancing he uh, went down past the judges table he ended up doing the splits with the chairs like he does um i uh, i was entertained last time i was less entertained this time i didn't think that this was a step up again uh how'd you feel about hans this time though i, I think i'm in agree agreeing with I think I agree with you. Wow, I'm, I'm really struggling tonight, Jay. Uh, I think I agree with you this time. I, I did enjoy it more than I enjoyed the first one, not as much as the last one. Uh, it It's starting to seem, this seemed very much more repetitive. Uh, he came out doing the Donka Shane thing again, like he did in the previous uh, performance. Um, right. Right. And and it didn't seem as big and as flashy as the as the semifinals. Yeah, yeah, there was something something missing there. But uh, Simon said, without being rude, I liked the song the first time. This was torture. How he said, "You're one of the most energetic, fun-loving, great acts. 
Alicia said the whole time I was thinking, this was terrible, but it's fun. Uh, Heidi said how hard it is to just enjoy this time together. I love you, Hans. You always put a smile to my face. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, there you go. So uh, that's the judge's comments. Uh, they're not expecting him to win. Nobody really is. But, you know, he's entertaining. He's an entertainer. Yes. It's, yeah. What can you say? Yeah. He's, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think he's probably going to finish about where he performed. Somewhere in the 6-7 range. I have a feeling that the next act we're getting ready to talk about will probably finish ahead of him. Um, but I, I, I think he is bottom half. But I think he's the top part of the bottom half. <laughs> top part of the bottom half yes uh yeah i i would expect a couple of acts to finish lower than him so that's fair uh so next act of the night then is tyler butler figueroa tbf um yes. he so he usually comes out he's got his big smile he's dancing he is jamming he's got his overalls on he's he's doing his tyler butler figueroa thing Big flashy smile. This time, he takes it all the way down. He's gonna do uh, the song "Hallelujah," the, you know, classic. Um, Hallelujah! <laughs> it, just him, no accompaniment, no big smiles, no background dancers. Just him gonna play solo. Um, what? What did you think of this performance? I, I, yeah. Okay, so this is the second episode the second performance in a row that he's done this slow small uh personal type song you know in the semifinals he did what a wonderful world uh he did the jeff buckley hallelujah this time um you know there i i we've talked many times that we're not big fans of his um and and i think that when he, when he slowed it down, that uh, that playing ability really sticks out, and I think it really um, it really shows. What am I what am I trying to say? So it, it exposes him more. I think it exposes him more when he slows it down and makes it more personal. Whereas when he's doing the the faster, hyped up, big production, you know, he can hide behind uh the way he plays you know we right i i i i felt like his it still felt flat it was flat just like you did when he played what a wonderful world i i didn't think it was anything special at all um i felt like he was just doing like a like a recital i didn't like feel like he was competing for finals in agt the champions yeah yeah there was there's no flash, uh, and I, I feel like he has to do better than this to be uh, given a, a legitimate shot at it. Yes. Uh, Simon said, you decided to do an iconic song with no one else on stage with you, vulnerable and endearing. I think you may have a shot. Eh, okay. okay. Heidi said, you hold your own on stage. Alicia said, you just made the super fans uh, very difficult. Uh, what's it? Very difficult uh, tonight. So yeah, you made the super fans' job very difficult. Yep, job very difficult. Okay, yep. I missed a word there. Uh, <sighs> I, I try to take those words, you know, th their comments down real quick. So sometimes I uh, I flub it. So <laughs> yeah. sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but she said stellar. That's what I got. Yeah. Uh, I I don't felt like I did not I do not feel like it was a standing ovation. I don't feel it was standing ovation worthy, which they all did. Um, I'm, I'm, and maybe I'm totally missing it. I mean, we've, I've mentioned this, maybe I just don't get it. Maybe there's something special about this kid that I'm not seeing. Um, it, it, it it's, you know, it could be one of those things like you, you talk about a movie or, or a book being so deep that you don't understand it. Maybe there's something about this kid <laughs> that's so, spe maybe he's so special that I'm just not able to see it. Yep, I think that's yeah, probably yeah. it. Okay, you know, next act. You know, you know, an object can be so an object can be so big that you're not able to see the whole object. You're only able to see a small part of that object, and then you look at that small piece of that object and think, "Well, that's nothing special." But you're not seeing the whole object. And maybe there's something about something big about this guy, this kid, that we're just not seeing. So, okay, that's that's a best case scenario. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 
I'm trying to give him the benefit know. of the doubt. I'm I'm really trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not. I, I'm not, I'm trying not to be a hater. Um, I know, I know, yeah. and I'm not trying to either. But man, they keep bringing him back. Like he has made it further both times, both seasons. Like I'm I'm just flabbergasted. But. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't. I'm right. trying not to be this this guy that's saying he's terrible or that he stinks. It's just. I don't get it. I'm not seeing it, and I'm just trying to critique it the way that I'm seeing it. So, okay, all right. Sorry, Fair sorry, enough. sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm ready to talk about V Unbeatable. Then let's do it. Let's uh, talk about the let's this, talk about a dancing group. Absolutely, one of the the best groups, time and time again. They are consistently uh, mind bogging bogglingly good. <laughs> v Unbeatable. Uh, this was Howie's Golden Buzzer. Um, they start with, like, from behind the judges' table. They throw a kid, you know, up to the front of the stage and then up onto the stage on top of a tower of people. Uh, they're holding a bicycle up in the air, and a dancer is thrown up to stand on top of it. They roll a tire across the stage. A guy uses it to jump off of it and over another dancer. Um, they have a, a prop, a, like it's like a long sheet hanging from the ceiling, uh, that they use it, you know, they, they spread it out and use it to throw a person. Uh, they have two people thrown up so in sync that they can, like, bicycle kick in the air and, like, touch the soles of their feet to each other. Um, they had one dancer thrown up to grab that sheet rope thing that was hanging from the stage. Uh, they throw one guy from left to right and another guy from right to left flipping over top of each other. It's always so, so good. Uh, the big finale move of the night, they hold that bicycle up in the air again. Uh, the wheels had to be like 10 feet in the air, and they throw a kid up, and he ends up like landing on top of the bicycle. So uh, just crazy stuff that they always are able to do. Fantastic act. So good. So good. What would you think of, uh, of The Unbeatable tonight? Yeah, the boy that they kept throwing around is incredible. I mean, the the, the I think it's the same boy that started at the beginning where they throw him over the judges' table and up on the stage. And he's getting up on those bicycles, and he's just he's coming out of nowhere. He's hitting on the beats like he's landing on the beats. Uh, that that little boy is just incredible. The rest of the dance crew is terrible. All the all the girls that are down front, they're incredible. This is one of the best groups of the season. I mean, and, and just every time we see them, it's just it's just nonstop greatness. Yes, their their precision, their like you said, their their ability to be on the beat. You know, nobody ever misses a mark. Every thrown and catch and flip, it's all so precise. It's just fun to watch. And there's there's so many of them. It's just so much energy on the stage in in that one moment. It's just Ugh. always great to watch always great to watch absolutely so between them and the next two I, it's going to be some sort of one two three order I don't know what it's going to be but I think the bottom the last three performances here are going to be some sort of one two three order it's hard to say otherwise yeah, yeah. so uh, just so you can wrap your mind around it it's V Unmeetable was who we just talked about Marcelito Pomoy uh, and Sandow Trio Russian Bar are the last two that I, I would agree. Those kind of feel like the top three. They saved those for last, and it's it's tough to tough to sort out those three. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, so go go ahead with the comments. Well, yeah. So Howie said this is by far the best act to grace any of the stages on any show. You yes. have more passion and dedication than any group I've ever seen. So a lot of hyperbole there. Um, but I don't know that it's without merit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Alicia said it was a colorful explosion of pure brilliance. Uh, Heidi said, I don't know how you can top this. You give us everything. Thrills, chills, more, more, more. Uh, Simon said, we are looking for an act that's not just brilliant, but you step it up every time. Part of the appeal is you're not a professional act. You are regular guys and girls who got together who've done something quite remarkable. So little time to prepare what you did. It just makes it more amazing. So um, 
and and they've somehow taken that amateurness of you know that tap and dad syndrome and uh, still make that uh work for them even in these you know elite stages of the competition yeah uh, uh, agreed agreed and you know i've i've never been big on dance crews but i've been on this crew on these on this group since the moment we saw them back in auditions the very i mean back yes. in season 14 of auditions yeah and i think both of you and i can go on record saying like dance groups really aren't our thing but there's something fantastic about the unbeatable that they really they deserve you know our our applause and accolades they're that good yeah yeah, yeah absolutely okay um fun act always always love to see the unbeatable on stage so you know it's almost like unfortunate that he got they got howie's golden buzzer because we missed a, a semifinals performance from him you know yeah <laughs> yeah but I'm, I'm glad that the that they got the buzzer so that we could see them in the finals absolutely yeah um absolutely all right uh ninth act of the night this is uh my man marcelito pomoy he is the uh the the male adeline bates <laughs> if that is a reference that means maybe, anything to you <laughs> maybe adeline bates is the female marcelito pomoy oh man and i'm i'm still gonna stand by what i said last time i want to see these two do a duet i'd love it so uh, would it be a duet or would it be a quad i i think it'd be a quartet yeah okay <laughs> uh all right so marcelito uh he, he does the the male and the female voices um this time he's going to do uh, uh beauty and the beast um and he he nails it i love it when he does like a single line of the female voice and then a single line of the male voice and a single line of the female voice and he switches between them so quickly um i smiled the entire time it's so enjoyable it's so fun I, I i don't know what else to say i think he's fantastic if you if this is the kind of thing that is interesting to you uh it's <laughs> he, he does it as good as anybody yes yes uh so you know last week you talked that the song he sang was kind of a a staple of your what youth and childhood mm. I mean, we sang the song in, in high school choir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this is uh, kind of the, the song of my youth and childhood. Uh, you know, Absolutely. I listened yeah. to, I mean, I burned through the Beauty and the Beast CD back when it came out um, in the in the early 90s. And uh, I listened to this song so many times uh, with Celine Dion and Peebo Ryson. Um, and and it's it's it was funny watching this. And because I watch, I typically watch it with the captions on, and the captions would come on and say "female voice, male voice, <laughs> female voice, male voice." Uh, but I'm going to say this, Jay, and it's I, 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 I think what he does is fantastic. But I'm just going to say there's there. I have one small problem with it, and that's okay. he, he cannot do the harmonies. Of course not. He cannot sing both parts at the same time. And I think no. when you when you sing a song like Beauty and the Beast. A lot of the uh, the the beauty of the song is when the harmonies come in and the two parts come together, um, and I think it's great what he does. I love and he's he's on key. He you know he hits the pitches. He's perfect and all that. But the one thing I feel that it's missing and, I, and he can't do it is sing the harmonies, sing the two parts together. Right. Uh, he does not. It, well, it's physically impossible, right? Yes, he could use right. technology to aid him, and <laughs> and maybe we could talk about that, right? So, like, okay. what if he went up on stage and he sang only the female part, and they played it back, and then he sang the male part along with it? Like, would that be better to watch, or would that be like uh, no, no, a yawn? No, I don't. I don't want that. I don't want to. I don't want him singing along with a with a track. Um, no, it would be him laying down the track, though, like it, him singing right. the female part. So, no? OK, so you're out. Yeah. So let me, let me ask this then. So would he would he sing one of the parts like before the show or would part of the act be he would sing the one of the parts and then play it back? So we'd actually hear the song twice. 
we'd have to hear the song twice. Or yeah, you I, know, I, I, I we think we could both hear w- him do the chorus and then you know play the chorus back over Ooh. with his just now recorded voice and the new voice. <laughs> or, it, yeah, I I think we're adding some complexity to it, and I think I would be out both ways. Um, I again, I think what he's doing is fantastic. I would love to be able to hear the harmonies to go with it. I know, and I know he can't do it. And that's why I just said, it's a small problem. It's not that big a deal. Um, it was just a, it was just something I noticed uh, this time that I didn't really particularly notice the past two times. And I, the only reason I noticed it is because I know this song so well. I know where those where those two parts come together. Um, right. It just it, it felt like something was missing, but I, I know that he can't he can't do it. It's just something he cannot do. Which is right. fine. Nobody Which is fine. can. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I, I know. I, I know. know. I know. I'm picking. I know. I'm. Pick, I know. I'm picking nits a little bit on this. But you're just, asking for the stars, and he gave you the moon. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, all right. All right. Um, no, I, he's fantastic. Yes. Uh, Heidi said it never gets old. It's incredible. Over and over again, you pick songs we all know and love, and it's fun to follow along with you. That's exactly how I felt. Howie said, when I first saw you, it was the surprise of it all. And the second time, I enjoyed it just as much, if not more, which is really saying something for, you know, one of these acts that kind of pulls one of these surprises out of their butts. Uh, Alicia said the song choice was perfect. The high notes were beautiful. Simon said, you are a very nice, very talented guy, even better than the last performance. If it were my choice, I would have done something less predictable. The songs are very safe and popular songs. Uh, Like the compilation of popular songs that Boogie Storm danced to, I think. (laughs) Yes. So, okay. So to kind of go along with that, what would be a duet song that would be more risky? I mean, like Bohemian Rhapsody. Know. I mean, does he sing Bohemian Rhapsody? Does he sing all the parts of Bohemian Rhapsody? But that's still all male voices. Like, <laughs> I guess so. I, yeah, it's like I don't know. I don't know okay. what Simon's asking for. I, I think he does what he does better than anybody in the world, and it's really really fun to watch that's what i'm gonna say D- does he sing all the parts to elvira i mean with the the <laughs> bass the bass guy and the the tenor guy and i mean how how yeah. wh- what ri- what risk can you take with something like this i i don't know yeah. i don't know what else he could do i i think that choosing those popular songs where we get to sing along with it we're like oh man this female part's coming up how's he gonna do yeah. and he nails it yeah. every time like that's fun yes you know so uh i don't know i'm i was a little disappointed with simon's comments uh you know it it was criticism not constructive criticism i felt um which i want you know so what what should he have done you know give me some ideas simon because I, yeah. I thought it was great. Yeah, Simon tweeted us. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, Simon <laughs> tweet at us. It's at AGT time. <laughs> but, but Simon <sighs> doesn't have a cell phone, so you can tweet from your computer. Yeah, or you know, just get one of your lackeys to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if anybody wants to tweet on us on behalf of Simon, you know, we'll our our <laughs> tweets are open. So yes, yes, please. <laughs> Give us suggestions. We'd love suggestions on what he could, uh, what risky song he could take. Yeah. Or, heck, what song you do want to hear him do. Because yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm curious what other ideas people have out there. What, yeah. what would be a good, du- good duet for, uh, for Marcelito Pomoy to do? Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last act of the night. Sandow Trio Russian Bar. Uh, they're coming out on stage. I don't remember which judge it was. He said... This looks like it could be dangerous. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Terry again reminded us not to try this at home, which, yes, you know, just kind of sticks me in the heart. But um, yeah, so Don't they're going to be doing this, this with over your brother and your wife, right? <laughs> with your yeah, it was it's it's her her husband and her brother in law, right? And so uh, anyhow, okay, so they uh, are over the bed of nails. They do like a scissor kick up in the air, and then a double backflip, 
like in a tuck position, then a double backflip in a pike position. Then they get out the fire and they start the bed of nails on fire and another double backflip with a twist. Then they do it blindfolded and they start the board on fire and the music drops out and, you know, just all the suspense in the world. They do another double backflip. It's so, it's so dangerous looking. Yeah, it, it it is. I, I do get a little annoyed by the slow motion that they always throw in for us, uh, but man, they're they're fun to watch. It does it does kind of feel like a one trick pony, right? They they do one thing, they do it so ridiculously well, and it's so scary and so interesting to watch. But you know, I I I get why they felt like they needed that risk of uh, playing the piano upside down for their. Uh, <laughs> what was it? The semifinals in their their first season. Uh, I I I get why they wanted to do that, but uh, I don't know. Like they do this so well. Yeah. I am afraid that this isn't going to be a championship level act, though. Now this this is their bread and butter. You know they they should never play a piano upside down. This is what they do. Um, and you continue to up this, you add spikes, you add fire, you go blindfolded, you, you do whatever you have to do to continue to up your performance using the Russian bar. You are called Russian trio, Russian bar. So do not, do not ever bring a piano out and hang upside down. Do the Russian bar. That's what you do. Um, That's what they do. Yeah. So they had 160 spikes underneath her, set them on fire, you know, danger, fire blindfold i'm all in on this yeah yeah and i, I do kind of like how he's comment from last episode when he said like i kept thinking like why can't you just go play the piano <laughs> right yeah. like it a slip a miss on this like it is actually deadly yes right? <laughs> yes this is not uh, a I, this is not getting shot in the neck with a flaming arrow this is getting impaled by 160 <laughs> spikes this is worse than getting shot in the neck with a flaming arrow. Yes. <laughs> to be clear. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Howie said, you're crazy. You're crazy amazing. You upped it. You promised us epic. Alicia said, literally, every time you raise the bar. You command the stage. You're rocking it like a bad mama you are. Heidi said, I'm at a loss for words. It's bonkers what you do. Everything could go wrong. Simon said, I think you just threw the competition wide open. I think this is one of the top three performances of the night. So... That's uh, that's Sandow Trio Russian Bar. Yes. Um, they're they're good. They're good at what they do. Um, so those ten acts, uh, you know, top half, I guess. We're saying uh, those last three we just talked about: V Unbeatable, Marcelito Pomoy, Sandow Trio Russian Bar. And who are the last two to round out the top five then? Is it Angelina Jordan and Duo Transcend? Yes. I think it's some sort of order of that five. I don't know what order that is, uh, but I think it's those are your top five. I think so, yeah. So the bottom half would be Alexa Lauenberger, Boogie Storm, Silhouettes, Hans, and Tyler Butler Figueroa. Yes. Yeah. Which I, I, th- uh, I think is pretty clear cut. I mean... And who knows what the super fans are going to vote for, but just eyeballing it, I think it's a pretty clear cut between the top five and the bottom five. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I don't know that it's real clear who the number one is. Uh, uh, I could make a really good argument for any of those five, really. Yeah, um, I, I like I said earlier, I think the the top three. I don't I don't know what the order is. Is V Unbeatable, March Silly to Pomoy, and Sendal Russian Bar. I think those are your top three, and then um, four is Duo Transcend, and five is Angelina Jordan. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you know what I was saying about how you know soloists, singers, they sort of have that facial recognition, that emotional connection that the other acts don't yeah uh you know that could give angelina you know an extra place or two higher maybe um duo transcend is so unique uh and 
good and what they do. Like, I can see them, you know, surprising me <laughs> with a higher placement, at least than, you know, fourth or fifth even. Um, golly, I don't know. I don't know. I think my if, – if I were to pick a winner, I think my guess would be the unbeatable. Okay. Yeah, it's a real good so, pick. Uh, that that would be my my number one pick. Um, but golly, it feels kind of wide open. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, we get to find out next week, Jay. All right. Well, with that, I suppose we should uh, we should call it a night. Uh, we'll just have to wait for the super vans to vote, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> what they give us so yeah ne- um, next week next week may be a real short episode because if it's a lot of fluff and exhibition we may not have a whole lot to talk about it you can expect a lot of fluff and exhibition we'll, <laughs> we'll keep it short um but you know what it's been a really fun season to talk about this uh, i always find myself looking forward to watching america's got talent and always looking forward to sharing my thoughts with you and with uh, our our you know, dozens, if not maybe even hundreds of, of listeners each week. Uh, we do appreciate you guys. Um, anything that you have to add or to respond, we always want to hear from you. Uh, I'm at One Man Bander. Cody's at Cody L. Patterson. Uh, we are at AGT Time or uh, AGT Cast on Facebook, AGTCast at gmail.com. And uh, with that, Cody, should we call it a night uh i do have one final thing before we close things out uh i found on hulu a tv show that i think is a couple years old called howie mandel's animals do things or something of that nature oh boy and it's basically Uh. a it's basically a half hour of voiceover from howie with animals like just doing stuff (laughs) uh funny things I yeah assume. sure sure funny things interesting kinda, things yeah sure why not it's kind of like uh was it america's funniest videos but it's okay, all yeah. it's all animals they do uh you know kind of in the middle of it they'll do a little, a little trivia thing or a, little, a small educational thing but mainly it's just uh 30 minutes of animals just doing stuff and how are doing voiceovers animals do things yeah Okay, so, well, <laughs> so y'all y'all may need, y'all may be looking for like an off season review of animals do things. All right, did you actually watch one of these episodes then? I did. I've watched one episode. There's, uh, from okay. what I've seen, there's two seasons, maybe three seasons. I've watched oh one episode. So, uh, with the plenty of content for an off season podcast. <laughs> then. Yes, yes. Uh, I, right. I I don't know if we'll do all three seasons we, we'll just kind of highlight it but <laughs> i've probably Maybe. just given i've probably just done the complete review in the last like two minutes so we'll <laughs> see well it, you know we could uh take a page out of robin akiva's book do season three episode seven we could yes we could just absolutely to, do that you know i hear that's a pretty consistently uh pretty consistently good episode so absolutely yep so uh, that's that's all i wanted to kind of cover real quick <laughs> fantastic all right well uh we do appreciate you guys we appreciate uh everything about uh being able to do this for you so uh keep giving us reasons keep giving us encouragement and we'll uh we'll look forward to rounding this out next week y'all have a good night oh and happy valentine's day oh thank you (laughs) bye